Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Stank Weasel here with another regular dose of irregular content. If you find anything useful or educational or helpful in this video, please consider liking and subscribing. I really appreciate all of the support we've had thus far, and I cannot thank you guys enough for all of the growth and excitement that I have about the channel going into this new year. So for this series, we're going to be looking at each of the maps kind of deconstructed. I pulled apart the game files and tried to identify some of the key things that I think should be kind of called out for new players and even experienced players. So we're going to be looking at the different UV locations as well as each of the Ouija board spawn points within each of the maps. For this episode, we're going to be looking at the Bleasdale Farmhouse, looking at all eight of the Ouija board location spawn points, as well as each of the UV fingerprint locations that could possibly be in play within your game session. I'll make sure to leave a time code below, so if you wanted to go ahead and skip past the UV and go straight to the Ouija board locations, you can do so. Bleasdale Farmhouse. So as we approach the front door, one of the things you'll notice is there's actually a handprint located on the outside of the door, and then immediately on the light switch to the interior. Moving towards the front room, there's a handprint on the door, light switch again. And then the pattern in this house is you'll notice that all of the exterior windows are going to have a, an angled corner pattern hand. Moving into the den, light switch again. Towards the kitchen, handprint on the door and then on the light switch inside. Notice the handprints are not on both sides of the door, they're usually only on one. And then the secondary light switch for the dining room. Exterior window, exterior window, surprise, exterior window. And you guessed it. Handprint on the interior of this door, not the exterior, and then the light switch. Moving towards the bathroom, handprint on the door, and then the light switch again. No other handprints in this bathroom. Same pattern on the same reused asset for the window. Moving back towards the workbench room, the light switch immediately around the corner, and then the exterior windows. Heading back towards the stairwell, just making sure we didn't miss anything. There is a handprint on the door to exit the house, so if you do use that door for secondary access, Again, exterior window. And then heading up the stairs, you'll notice one of the things that's often overlooked is the handprints on these windows that are facing the outside of the house. Handprint on this door, and then on the window in the bathroom, and then on the light switch. Again, no other handprints in the bathroom. Coming up to the laundry room, handprint on the door, light switch, the laundry that got fixed, exterior window. Handprint on this side of the door, not the other side, and then one on the light switch, and then the same reused windows again. Coming around to this bathroom, handprint on one side, not the other, and then the light switch. There is a window, so it's going to be up in that corner again. Same window, same corner. Handprint in the hallway door, not the inside, light switch, and then exterior windows. Moving to the next room, handprint on this side, not that side, one on the light switch, and then our favorite exterior windows. A lot of the maps will have similar patterns to how they're designed, light switch again, and you'll notice that as you see similar things like broken windows or um, curtained windows that they will have the handprints in the same places. There's no other place for the handprints upstairs in the attic. And that concludes the UV investigation. Moving on to the Ouija board spawns. Start at the front of the house and work our way through. The first one's in the front left room. So when you first enter the house, you take an immediate left into that little room. It's the one that faces the truck. There's the front door for point of reference. And then it's back in the corner. The second location is on the workbench in the back of the house behind the kitchen. And then kind of navigating back towards the front of the house for a point of reference. Third location is in the dining room in the front corner, up by those windows. 
This location is often overlooked as most people just do a flyby and run through the room without ever checking the corner by the chair. The fourth one's going to be upstairs behind that room divider. You'll notice this to be a common pattern specifically in the farmhouses. So right under the stairs or right next to the stairwell, there's that bedroom to the right when you come up the stairs. In that bedroom behind that divider is where it will spawn. The fifth one's going to be on the shelf in the laundry room where we used to be able to hide between the washer and dryer, but miraculously that has been fixed by just simply moving the utilities around. Next is going to be upstairs in that bathroom at the top of the stairs, and it actually spawns in the bathtub itself. This one makes a lot of noise when it spawns because it often bounces around in the tub itself. Number seven and eight are near each other. They're both in the attic. Number seven's in the rocking chair in the back corner near the front of the house, and number eight is located on the bins next to the couch. Thank you all so much for watching. I really hope that this helps you in your ghost hunts and investigations. And don't forget to like and subscribe. Let me know if there's anything else you'd like to see or like me to pull apart or if you'd like a tutorial on how to do this yourself. Um, again, happy 2021. We've made it to the second day of the year at least. So we know it's for real and it's not just December 33rd at this point. And I couldn't do this without you guys. Appreciate it. Thank you.